This is a walkthrough of the data merge feature in InDesign 2024. Uh, this feature has not changed as long as I can remember, so it should be pretty stable even into future versions. Uh, and I'm not going to show it in a fully designed piece of artwork. I'm going to show this just very, very simply so there isn't any distractions. But presumably you've already designed your artwork and you have all your font selected colors and now all of the background images and that sort of thing in here. Uh, and now we're ready to actually start making some of the text and images uh, variable so that they change when you export artwork. So all I've done here is created an InDesign document that is 6x9 for a 6x9 postcard. Okay, so very basic. And I've opened the data merge window. That's under Window, Utilities, Data Merge. And once I've opened that, I need to connect to a data source. So I have a uh, Excel spreadsheet right here. It's very basic. It has 19 records, has Mr. Mrs., has first, last, nickname, address, city, state, zip, vacation, and discount. Now it's important to note for text that you're bringing in, uh, InDesign can only bring in the characters that are written in this field. So uh, if, for example, in my paragraph uh, promoting this postcard, I want to say, uh, we are offering this discount to people from the state of Ohio, I can't bring in OH and convert it to the word Ohio. I actually have to create another column and um, type in the word Ohio, Indiana, New York, and actually have a column for spelled out words so that I pull that in. So that's important to note. You can't alter this when it comes in like you can do in more powerful variable data programs, but still, this is pretty cool. All right, so all this information is here. We'll come back to this when we're ready to set up the image, but for all my text, this is, perf this is set up perfectly fine. All right, so I'm gonna go here into data merge, select data source, and you can see here I have my CSV and I have my CSV in the same folder as my InDesign file. So world travel postcard is my InDesign document name. It's in the same folder as that. That's important because it's going to be looking for images in this same area. Uh, and you notice I have an images folder with a few images in there. So I'm gonna select the CSV, hit open. And here are all of those headings to each of the columns. If one of your columns doesn't have a heading, it will give you a warning and will not bring in. Every column has to have a heading uh, so that it knows what type of information is in there. Okay, now that I have this, it's pretty easy to work on, uh, to work in all my variable data text. All I have to do is draw a text box just like that and every element that I want. So let's go ahead and do like the address blocks. I'm going to do suffix and it drops right in and I'm going to hit the space bar to get a space because I want a space between Mr. and the first name and then I'm going to drag in first name space last name there we go and I'm going to hit enter because I want to make a return there for the next line so I'm going to do address and I'm going to hit enter I'm going to do city and I'm going to put a comma space and I'm going to do state now I can, I can do space and I can I can also double click for zip code. Uh, that also drops it in there, wherever your cursor is. So now I have an address block. It is all formatted. Anything I apply, any character styles that I apply to this. So if I take this, uh, this type and um, I, let me bring up, um, type in tables, here we go, sorry, character. And um, I wanna make this bold, I can do that. There we go. And now, any anything I apply to this, it could be character color, whatever, uh, my variable data will take on those same attributes. And you'll see that when we create it. Now, uh, this is the tricky part, images. So I'm gonna take an image block and go ahead and just create an image block there. So we'll have that. All right, now, you noticed I have an image that I want to be, I want this image to be controlled by the vacation line, but you notice this vacation um, entry has a T next to it because right now InDesign is seeing that column as a text uh, type of, of information. Information is text, not image. We need to tell InDesign that instead of bringing in text, we want to bring in an image. 
So what I need to do next is to tell InDesign where my images are saved uh, for each of the uh, images that I want to pull in. So this right here is just going to pull in the word beach. That's not helpful. Um, so we need to actually tell InDesign where my images are. So I'm going to highlight this column, hit Command C, or yep, and then right click at the top of discount and say insert copied cell cells. So now I have a duplicate column of vacation. Now I want this to now represent images. So I'm going to change the header name right there, image. And now I could go in and start typing in a file path images slash beach dot jpeg and then I could copy this and paste it onto each of the beaches and that would work for uh, 19 records but imagine if I have hundreds I don't want to do that and I'm likely gonna miss uh, names and it'll take me a long time so let me undo that uh, what I'm gonna do is use the find replace feature in InDesign so if I go to edit find replace I get this cool little dialog box and in here your options may need to be opened up. In here, I can tell it what to look for. So I'm gonna say, I want to look for the word beach, and I want to put in the file path, which is, if I look where my files are saved, inside the folder with the InDesign and CSV, I have my images folder. Remember that, images is the folder name, slash goes inside the folder, beach.jpeg, and then I can say, next and it will find the word beach and I can say replace and I can and it jumps to the next one hit replace so this is a quick way that it finds the words hit replace replace and then it jumps right back up here I don't want to replace again because it'll drop replace that word beach all right so now we've done beach now let's do snow so I'm going to change this now to look for snow and the name of my snow image is snow.jpg and this time, instead of finding each one and replacing them, I can just hit replace all. Now make sure you only have this column highlighted when you do this, otherwise it will replace the vacation column as well, which isn't that bad because we don't end up needing this, but maybe you are using this in your text and you need the word mountain in your, your paragraph. So we definitely don't want to do that. And the last one is mountain and we're going to change the image to slash mountain. There we go. Replace all. And now I have file paths for each one of my images. OK, so now I'm going to save this document. And I'm going to go back to my InDesign document. And nothing's changed yet. But I can go to this little flyout and say update data source. And it will update my data source to show an image. But notice I still have a T next to image, even though I put file paths in there. What's happening? Well, we still need to tell InDesign to look for the file paths. So there's one last thing we need to do. So I'm going back here and see where I have image. InDesign has a little trick where you put an at sign. And if I put an at sign using, if I'm using Excel, uh, it's going to give me an alert. It doesn't like at signs because it thinks I'm trying to do something uh, that I am not allowed to do. So in order to get an at sign, I actually have to put a little apostrophe in front of it. The apostrophe basically tells InDesign, hey, it's OK, actually use the at sign. So there we go. Now I have at image in the header image here, header for my image file paths. Now I'm going to save again. Go back to InDesign, go to Data Merge, Update Data Source, and notice that little T now changes to an image, a little picture icon. So now I know this is an image. So I can take this image and remember that that uh, image frame that I have? Drop it in there. It now just changed to blue. And when I click Preview, there is my image. And I can click through each of my records and see the images change and the text changes based on the files that are uh, being referenced in my Excel spreadsheet. So now I can here, go up here and hit ex export to PDF and select which records, how many I want to, to export. Uh, this is also 
where you're, if you have a second page, that will export as well. This is pretty self-explanatory. So that's how you do a data merge in InDesign 2024.